assimilation. This video talks about assimilation, which is a linguistic term. The definition of assimilation is un fenómeno lingüístico que ocurre cuando un sonido se hace más parecido a un sonido vecino por influencia de este. So in English, that means a linguistic phenomenon that occurs when a sound becomes similar to a neighboring sound because of the influence of the neighboring sound. So another important thing to mention is that this occurs when a sound happens at the end of a syllable. So posición final de sílaba. So a sound becomes similar to another sound, to another neighboring sound. So one way that it can become similar is through sonorización, which means uh, becoming a voiced consonant. So for example, S is unvoiced, so that means it's sorda. Uh, when you say S, like you don't use your vocal cords. However, the, uh, the sound Z, 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 you can feel your vocal cords vibrating. So this is a voice sound, um, and in Spanish we call that sonora. And you'll notice in words that when S comes before a voiced consonant, that S, which is sorda or voiceless, will become voiced. So for example, let's look at the phrase las mandres. When you say it slowly, you don't notice um, the, the consonant that S doesn't change, las madres. But when you say it quickly, las madres, las madres, las madres, you notice that that S, which sounds like S, becomes a Z. So what happens is because that S comes before a voiced consonant, the M, the M, the M sound, it becomes voiced. So las Las, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but las madres. Let's look at another example. Las damas, las damas, las damas, las damas. Because the D, the D, is voiced, or sonora, that S will become voiced or sonora as well. So instead of saying las Damas, when you say it quickly, it becomes las damas with a z sound. The same thing happens in the word mismo, mismo. Because the s is that final position of the syllable, mismo, and it comes before a voiced consonant, the m, so m, mismo. So the voiced consonant m makes that s voiced as well, or sonora, mismo. You can also see it in the example, pez grande, pez grande. The G is voiced, g, g. So that S sound, pez, becomes pez with a Z sound because it comes before a voiced consonant, pez grande, pez grande. Now, if you're talking about Castilian Spanish, they would normally say pez like with your tongue between your teeth, interdental sound, pez, pez grande. But when you say that quickly, um, in Castilian Spanish, that sound, that th, tongue between your teeth sound, turns into voice. So it's going to sound like mm. So instead of saying pez grande, it's going to be pez grande, pez grande, which looks like this transcribed phonetically. Um, if you look at this image right here, the first sound represents the TH sound, and the the second part of that, the, the D with the little stick on it, represents the, like your tongue between your teeth, um, but voiced. So the first one is unvoiced or sorda, and the other one is voiced or sonora. So in this example, the th becomes voiced 
N because of the G in grande, because that's voiced. So you're going to have per grande. Okay? Um, you can also have assimilation uh, with the point of articulation. So, for example, in the word tango, the G is a velar or a velar sound. So that N is also going to take the point of articulation of a velar sound or a velar sound. So that little tail on the N shows that it's a velar sound. So tango. You can notice that when you say that, tango, that you're pronouncing the N in the velar region or in the velar. You're pronouncing it further back than you normally would. The same thing happens um, in the example un carro because the k is also a velar or a velar sound. So that N takes the point of articulation of the k sound. So you're going to have un carro, un carro. When you say that, you can notice that the, the N is in the velar region. It's further back. Un gol, un gol. The G is a velar or velar sound. So in this example, the N also takes the point of articulation of that G. Un gol, un gol. Um, there's also assimilación when you have an N and a B because the N takes the point of articulation of the B. So it'll actually sound like an M. For example, when you say un beso, when you say that quickly, it sounds like un beso, un beso, un beso. So that's assimilation because the N is taking the point of articulation of the B. So you're pronouncing it um, as like a bilabial or bilabial sound. Un beso. So the same thing happens in the example un pote. Un pote, but quickly, un pote, un pote, un pote. Because you're pronouncing the N as bilabial because the P is bilabial. So you're making it un pote. So it sounds like an M. Lastly, um, the T can also be a dental sound. Um, it's usually alveolar or alveolar, but if the N comes before a T or a D, it becomes dental. So it sounds about the same, but the point of articulation is different. So, for example, when you have the word un tío, un tío, that little mark under the N shows that it's a dental N because the letter that comes after it, the T, is dental or dental. Okay, then you have un diente, un diente. The D is dental as well, so the N becomes dental due to assimilation. All right, so to wrap up, assimilation or assimilación is un fenómeno lingüístico que ocurre cuando un sonido se hace más parecido a un sonido vecino por influencia de este. Ocurre cuando un sonido aparece al fin de una sílaba. Okay, and like we saw before, this can occur like when the S turns to a Z, a Z sound because the consonant that comes after it is voiced or sonora. It can also happen when a consonant takes the point of articulation of the following consonant. So I hope you guys understand the simulation better now. Hasta luego.